Um, the, the recent events that we've faced in the United States uh, requires for us as a church to address that topic. Uh, we do not want to remain silent on it. Um, and I did see in the comments, uh, Mike was, I don't know, Matt was asking about um, if we're going to be talking about some of the protests and the curfew. And that will be mentioned, but we're more looking at God's heart um, and how he, as, as disciples of Jesus, he wants us to deal with these current events. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I want to say is if, if you're a person of color, um, as I've talked to some, some of you this past week, it's, some of the events is, is unfortunately nothing new. And, but I think what's new is we, we've got to make sure that we are keeping our heart focused on God. Um, and if you look at just how society has been responding recently, um, we've got to make sure we're responding in a godly way. You know, just the few of the events that have happened recently of, you know, Ahmaud Arbery being killed in, in back in February by two white men when he was just jogging, uh, not doing anything wrong. Um, to George Floyd this past week, you know, being killed by a, a white police officer kneeling on his neck. Um, that's horrific. Both of those are horrific. You know, and then to yesterday uh, in Salt Lake City, uh, where we had a peaceful protest. Um, and I even know that, so, you know, we had some people that attend that, but then it turned into a violent protest. And some of you have probably seen the, the pictures by now, and, you know, there's, there were cars that were burned. There was looting that started um, in some of the downtown areas. Um, and it led to a curfew last night uh, for Salt Lake City itself. That's still in effect. You know, our society's in a crisis. Mm -hmm. And I think the crisis is one that's been there for a while, but we need to, we need to respond in a godly way. Mm. Um, you know, I was looking at a, a quote, and some of you may have seen it by Will Smith this week, and, you know, the essence of the quote was, racism isn't getting worse, it's just now being filmed. Mm. And that, that, that's unfortunately very true. And, and I think... For my, myself, my, Melissa and I, is we're trying to learn about it. We're trying to see how do we respond in a godly way. You know, our society is in a crisis. We have a true racism issue in the United States. Mm -hmm. And we have a racism issue here in our community. And I truly believe we need to be a part of the solution. Mm -hmm. I believe that as a church, we have an incredible opportunity to be a light to the world. You know, for Salt Lake City, our church is, is one of the most diverse churches. Mm -hmm. And how we learn together, how we work together, how we share God's love can be a light during this, this dark time. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll be honest. I don't know what the solution is. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest. I don't know what it's like to grow up in America as a person of color. Mm -hmm. But hear my heart, I want to understand. I want to learn. I want to help us as a church family figure out how we can be God's light to our hurting community. Yeah. And, and I want you to know that if you are a person of color, the Salt Lake Christian Church is your ally in this fight. We don't have all the answers. But we're determined to work together to figure out what we can do. You know, this week, I came to fully realize that as a white man, I was born with a privilege that I did not earn or deserve simply because of the color of my skin. Now, I knew that fact intellectually. But this week, through some conversations I had, I realized the depth of that truth. Mm -hmm. I realized that my brothers and sisters of color grew up in a different America than I grew up in. Yeah. In one of my conversations this week, I was talking with a brother and he was telling me how one of the most dangerous places in a city for him is to be near a police station. And I realized when he said that how different 
his America was from my America. Because for a white person, that's the safest place in a city. And that dichotomy is wrong. Mm. That dichotomy is sad. And it breaks my heart. I, can't, I haven't been able to shake that thought all week. Yeah. You know, I may not know the exact way forward. You know, we, we know we don't know the exact way forward. But let me tell you what I do know. I know that as disciples of Jesus, we must let God's word define our response during this time. Yeah. I know that we cannot imitate the world. And we cannot just give into our emotions through the highs and the lows. Mm -hmm. And I know that we must look to the scriptures for guidance and pray to God for strength. Yeah. And so let's, with that in mind, if, if our, as disciples of Jesus, we, we need to be men and women of God who follow his scriptures. Let's look at the Bible. Mm -hmm. And let's start looking at that and help us to start to define our response. Mm -hmm. And by no means is this a definitive lesson. This is simply a conversation starter. Yeah. And, and we need to learn and grow together as a community. Turn over to uh, Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And that's in the uh, Old Testament, in the, the prophets, so towards the end of the Old Testament. Uh, in Micah 6, verse 8, God says through the prophet I make, Micah, He has shown you, O, o mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Hmm. You know, it talks about what does the Lord require of us? And I think the scripture is applicable for us today because what does the Lord require of us as disciples of Jesus to respond to the current circumstances in our society? And what's, or not even the current circumstances, the ongoing circumstances yeah. that are currently being highlighted. Yeah. He says to act justly, to love mercy, mm -hmm. and to walk humbly with your God. And, and I think this scripture needs to be a, a key for us as a church, as individuals. You know, let's look at each one of these. You know, the first one is as disciples of Jesus, God expects us to act justly. Make sure you understand, he expects us to act. You know, that means we need to be aware of how we treat others. Are we being just towards them or are we just falling in line with society? Mm -hmm. To act justly means to act righteously towards others. Righteousness and just uh, justice are some, sometimes, a lot of times, used by common words in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. In other words, we need to treat, to act justly means to treat other people as God would treat them. Mm -hmm. One thing I've really been learning is to act justly means to not remain silent. We must act. We must speak up. Mm -hmm. But we need to do it in a godly way. Amen. Look over in Isaiah chapter 58. <clears throat> in Isaiah 58, I want to read verse 6. And in this passage, is talking about fasting, the spiritual discipline of fasting and focusing on God. And basically, in the first part, the first five verses, God is um, rebuking the Israelites for how they are fasting incorrectly. And in verse 6, he shares what he wants us to do. In verse 6, he says, Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice. And untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free 
and to break every yoke? You know, part of acting justly is to loose the chains of injustice. Mm -hmm. Part of acting justly is to untie the cords of a yoke that enslaves someone or hold a people back. Part of acting justly is to set the oppressed free. This is God's heart that we're looking at. Mm. God is not passive when it comes to justice. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to help end the injustice. You know, just as fasting is a part of our spiritual disciplines as disciples, so is fighting for justice. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a new concept as I was really weighing that this week. Like, that's part of my spiritual act of worship to God mm. is fighting for justice. Wow. You know, you can look in Luke 4 when, when Jesus' first sermon that he preaches in the synagogue. What does he read? He reads from Isaiah about proclaiming freedom for prisoners mm -hmm. and those who are oppressed. But what I want to stress is how we fight for justice matters to God. Mm. There's a lot of people right now who will say we're fighting for justice and that's why we're doing this or we're doing that. But how we fight for justice matters to God. Mm -hmm. We can't look to the world for solutions. We've got to look to the scriptures. Amen. And so we see the second part of Micah 6, 8 is God expects us to love mercy. Mm -hmm. So first he expects us to act justly, but then he says, make sure that you do it by loving mercy mercy yeah you know that's a challenging concept to yeah. love mercy yeah. like i love mercy when it's given to me yeah <laughs> but it's it's sometimes hard to others like we need to be individuals in the church if we're going to respond in a godly way who love to forgive mm. we need to be individuals who love to extend grace to other people yeah we need to be individuals who love to pour out mercy on others who don't deserve it yeah. that's challenging yeah. look over in Luke chapter 6 I want to look at what Jesus had to say on this topic in Luke 6 we're going to start reading in verse 27 This is what Jesus says to his disciples. He says, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if everyone, anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. Mm -hmm. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. Mm. But love your enemies. Do good to them. And lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Mm. Then your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High. Because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Mm. You know, when I was wrestling with what does it mean to love mercy, I, I can't think of a better scripture than this where Jesus actually says, be merciful as your Father is merciful. The standard for us of mercy is God's mercy mm -hmm. towards us. You know, what, is this, what does this look like? What does he specifically say? Like, these are some really, it's a really challenging scripture. So challenging. He says, love your enemies. You know, to, have, to love mercy means to love your enemies, to do good to those who hate you, mm. 
to bless those who curse you, to pray for those who mistreat you. Mm-hmm. That's a hard scripture. Yeah. For any of us in, what, what, in, in so many different situations. Yeah. You know, I, I know and as I've talked to some of my, my brothers this week, it's like there's been parts of me that, that want to get angry that is angry at people and want to, wants to react to protect them, to stand up for them. But, but I also have to love mercy. Mm-hmm. You know what I love about Jesus? I love being, a, is, is, is I can choose to not follow my own sinful desires and I can choose to follow him. Because mm-hmm. this is what Jesus did when he was dying on the cross. Yeah. And he looked at the crowd and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yeah. He was talking about the Jewish leaders. He was talking about the Romans. He was talking about everyone. He was asking God. He was showing them love. Mm-hmm. This is where Christianity differs from the world. Yeah. To act justly. But to act justly while we love mercy. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know how when Jesus says that <clears throat> Unless you change and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. So I think we can learn a lot from children, right? Um, so I wanted to share with you a story from my childhood. And I was talking to a black sister yesterday, and she felt that it was really relevant. So here it goes. <laughs> um, so I, I was raised <clears throat> by a single mom, and she... She lived with her, she went and lived with her parents, my grandparents. My grandfather was racist. So I grew up, my, you know, in that time period, hearing very hateful and oppressive words. But I knew in my heart of hearts, as a child, I understood that that was wrong. And I had this in this intrinsic knowledge I don't know where it came from but I mean that that this is wrong just because a person's skin is different than mine means that we treat them differently I knew that that was wrong um, and I finally at one point had enough you know and I don't remember the age I was it was probably somewhere between like five and ten or something but I confronted him and I stood up to him and I questioned him. And I said, why? Why would you treat people, people differently? Why would you care? <laughs> Sorry, Caleb was distracting me with the flipping of the Bible. Um, why would you care what, what, I mean, we're all the same on the inside, you know? And, um, I grew up in like the country in Pennsylvania. And so in high school, there were probably only about 10 black people in in our school. And I was friends with every single one of them, almost like to spite him, like in rebellion against his viewpoint. And um, one of them became one of my best friends that I was, I was at her house all the time. The point is, this was the same man who even though I opposed him and his blatant hatred and disrespect and, and um, oppress- oppressive words, I still crawled up in his lap at night and, you know, cuddled with him while we watched TV. I, I never stopped loving him. And I think that's the simplicity of children, right? They're not as complex as we are. <laughs> they don't have all these layers. Um, I, I saw that I, I loved him and I never stopped loving him, but yet I, I, I wasn't going to um, go along with his viewpoint of racism. And, you know, what I'm, what I'm learning from all of these hard conversations that we're having, that we're leaning into with people of color, is that it's not just enough to stand back and be silent. You know, it's not enough to... Um, agree with the or or like 
disagree with what's going on, but it's it's taking that next step and speaking up against the blatant racism. And um, that that's what I did as a child. And I, I wanna be I wanna do that more as an adult. Thanks for sharing that. You know, I, I think as we look at this idea of loving mercy is I wanna ask us to sort of think about why is this Jesus' standard? You know, it's it's Jesus' standard because that's what it means to imitate God. You know, and so that becomes a standard for us as a disciple of Jesus. He says in the scripture, when we love mercy, we are children of God. Mm. Because God is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked. And as we said before, we're still figuring this all out. But as we figure this out as a church, as a community, we've got to make sure we have to absolutely keep loving mercy as a central component of it all. Mm. And then lastly, back to Micah 6, verse 8, the third thing that says God requires of us is that God expects us to walk humbly with God. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You know, I was thinking about it, and have you ever had to think about your work environment? Have you ever had to train a new employee at work? Mm. Someone who just came in? who didn't know the job, who've never done it before, were they humble, eager to learn, willing to be corrected, or were they prideful, didn't want to listen to your experiences or your, your advice, and, and they felt like they knew how to do everything? Those are the two sides. It's, it's are we going to be the, the humble individuals who are looking to God for the answers, walk humbly with Him, or are we going to be prideful in what we think are our own opinions and that's where we've got to let the, the scriptures guide us yeah and I think those of us that have never experienced this type of mistreatment we don't we don't know what this feels like mm -hmm. and <clears throat> this is the type of humility that we'll need to to learn um we know that we can never understand. We can never understand. All we can do is listen. We can lean in. We can have those uncomfortable conversations. We can ask a lot of questions. We can listen and listen and listen some more. And I think that's what I'm learning and what I'm really trying to grow in during this time and I think that's the humility that God speaks about and what we need with one another. Amen. You know, once again, as we look at Jesus, Jesus lived this out. Jesus walked humbly with God and accepted direction from him. There's several times he says, I, I can only say what God has told me to say. You know, I, I can only act in the way I see the Father acting. He was humble mm -hmm. to God's direction. And we need to do the same. You know, as we start to have a, a time of communion here in a few minutes, you know, I, I want to encourage us that during these, during this time, and always, God expects us to act justly, mm. to love mercy, and to walk humbly with Him. And guess what? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that is what He did. That is yeah. what defined Jesus. Yeah. Jesus stood up for the oppressed. It's all over the Gospels. The people who were shunned and hated by society, he loved them and fought for, for their justice. Yeah. From, from the lepers to the women to the tax collectors to the Samaritans, and you can name more in there. And Jesus was merciful. He, he gave mercy to everyone. And Jesus was humble. Yeah. She says that's what defined him. He was meek and lowly in heart. Mm. You know, as we close out, let's look in 1 John chapter 4. In 1 John 4, the whole book of 1 John is pretty incredible when it comes to love. Mm, yeah. But as we focus on the communion here, I want to take our hearts to 1 John 4, verse 7. 
And we'll read 7 through 11. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Mm. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Mm -hmm. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as we reflect with the communion today, I want us to remember that, that Jesus died on the cross out of love for every single person, mm -hmm. regardless of the color of their skin, regardless of their economic status, regardless of where they grew up. And therefore, let us let that love that was poured out on us motivate us Reflect on that love. Motivate us to show love for others, regardless of how they treat us.